Hello everyone. Today you're going to see me as a news anchor. I'm going to be posting a video of a summer newscast that took place at the Wartburg IBA High School Summer Broadcasting Workshop, hosted at the time by Dr. Jeff Stein in 2008. I hope you enjoy my brief stint as a news anchor. I think you'll be surprised. From the McElroy Communication Arts Center on the Wartburg College campus, this is a special edition of WTV8 News, produced by students in the Wartburg IBA High School Summer Broadcasting Workshop. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Tristan Gardner from Milo, Iowa. And I'm Brooke Johnson from Traer, Iowa. This is a special edition of WTV8 News, part of the Summer Broadcasting Workshop, sponsored by Wartburg and the Iowa Broadcasters Association. Senator Ted Stevens is indicted and Los Angeles is rocked by an earthquake. CNN's April Williams has more in headlines. A 5.4 magnitude earthquake shook Southern California Tuesday. The quake rattled buildings in downtown Los Angeles and was felt as far away as Las Vegas. Dramatic video of the quake was captured during a taping of the Judge Judy courtroom reality show. The show had to stop production. So far, only minor damage has been reported. A judge in Florida has denied Casey Anthony's request to stop releasing her jailhouse phone calls. Anthony's two-year-old daughter, Kaylee, has been missing for more than a month. Casey Anthony is behind bars on charges of child neglect, making false statements, and obstructing an investigation. Her attorney said he didn't want the calls made public because it could hurt the search for Kaylee. Alaska Senator Ted Stevens has been indicted on seven felony counts of falsely reporting income. He denies lying about receiving gifts worth more than $250,000 from an energy company, a company that won millions of dollars of federal contracts. For Headlines, I'm April Williams. The California wildfires continue to spread near Yosemite National Park today. Find out what that means for the park later in this newscast. The Waverly Golf Course is undergoing some changes. Holes 13th and 14th are in the process of being relocated. Construction is underway for a new par 3 and dogleg par 4. There will also be new landscapes surrounding the holes that includes many features such as three ponds and a waterfall. The current 13th and 14th holes have been sold to the Waverly Health Center for expansion. However, the hospital cannot take ownership until 2011, so current play will not be affected. There's a new look at the Vogel Library. New library director Dr. Jean Donham and information literacy librarian Carrie Weaver began work at Wartburg this summer. Donham is the college librarian and comes to Wartburg from Cornell College. She replaces Jill Gremmels, who left in May 2007. Donham will also hold a teaching position in the Education Department. Weaver will serve as library liaison for communication arts, business, and the humanities. She replaces Randall Schrader, who left Wartburg last January. The reopening of the Grout Museum of History and Science in Waterloo has been delayed. It was originally scheduled for August 12th, but construction issues related to the New Sullivan Brothers Iowa Veterans Museum have pushed the Grout Museum's reopening back to November 15th. The Iowa Veterans Museum is the latest addition to the Grout campus, and officials there say it made more sense to have both facilities in full working order before reopening the Grout Museum to the public. Other buildings on the Grout campus are still open. The Veterans Museum Grand Opening is scheduled to coincide with Veterans Day weekend in November. A local hardware store is saying out with the old and in with the new. Miller True Value is setting up shop in the old Walmart building in Waverly. Store manager Greg Miller says that the move has allowed the store to carry a larger variety of merchandise and brand names. Changes to the old Walmart building include new bathrooms, and turning the pharmacy into office space. 
Miller also intends to lease out the part of the building that's not in use. The store will be giving out prizes and hosting luncheons as part of the grand opening August 22nd and 23rd. In California, a wildfire burning near Yosemite National Park is just 15% contained. The fires burned some 46 square miles since the target shooter sparked it last week. The flames are some 12 miles from Yosemite, but officials say there's no immediate threat to people in the park. CNN Dan Simons has a story on what thousands of firefighters and area residents are dealing with. The fire is showing no signs of quieting down. That's because it has a virtually endless supply of fuel. Miles and miles of brush and dry vegetation just waiting to ignite. The flames have climbed 100 feet into the air. Even seasoned firefighters have been amazed by the spectacle. This is something, you know, and, this, and the state being stretched already because of all the fires and stuff that, you know, we've, we've had to call in uh, crews from Arizona and things like that. So this is something. The Red Cross opened an evacuation center for people who had to flee their homes. It's where we caught up with Mary Briggs, who received word her home had been destroyed. I keep remembering things I lost, and it's, it's hard. And I don't, have a, I don't have a home. A lot of what she has now inside a single garbage bag, and the single mother did not have fire insurance. I didn't think it was going to burn. I had to go to work and uh, we grabbed uh, a couple of things and and I just figured we'd go back the next day and it would be there and it's not there, you know. Many people here live on vast acres of land with goats, sheep and other livestock. The local fairgrounds has turned into its own evacuation shelter for animals. Where there are no flames, chances are you can still see smoke. Yosemite National Park remains open, but the views aren't quite the same. Still, park officials are not discouraging people from visiting. Certainly, the, the visibility and air quality are a factor, but the park is open and fully operational. Authorities believe this wildfire, which has destroyed at least 25 homes, was started by a target shooter, but at this point, they believe it was entirely accidental. Dan Simon, CNN, Mariposa, California. Firefighters say the blaze is behaving erratically because the area has not burned in the past 100 years. More than 2,000 wildland fires have burned in California since June. Most of them have been contained. The cries of play ball can now be heard at a new facility in Waterloo. Hellman Field at the Dr. Walter Cunningham School for Excellence opened on July 15th with the playing of the local Optimist League All-Star Game. Hellman Field was the idea of longtime public relations professional Bob Hellman. His family donated $75,000 to help with construction costs. The new ballpark benefits youth baseball and women's softball programs in the Cedar Valley. Wartburg Television has a sponsor, Opening Night Festivities. The broadcast you are watching is part of the 10th Summer High School Broadcasting Workshop. Presented by Warburg College and the Iowa Broadcasters Association, the program under the direction of communications arts professor Dr. Jeff Stein has expanded to three weeks each summer for high school students, plus a workshop for teachers. A total of 13 students from four different states are participating in this week's workshop. Overall, more than 300 students have graduated from the Warburg Summer Broadcasting Program. Students toured KWWL-TV and the radio group of Waterloo and have also done live radio broadcasts. The workshop wraps up with four live television newscasts on Friday morning. Well, that's all the time we have for this newscast. From the High School Summer Workshop, I'm Tristan Gardner from Milo, Iowa. And I'm Brooke Johnson from Trer, Iowa. Thanks for joining us. Join us for another live newscast tonight at 9 o'clock. Good night.